Well, also today, Trump defended North Korea's Kim Jong Un, contradicting his own national security advisor. He's kept his word to me. That's very important. What they've said was that they're not going to test ballistic missiles, uh, uh, intercontinental range ballistic missiles, or nuclear, uh, have nuclear tests. That's continued. Okay. Kim has not kept his word. So why does the president say he has? Out front now, our military analyst, Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, former Army Commanding General for Europe and the 7th Army, and Bruce Klinger, former CIA Deputy Division Chief for Korea and Senior Fellow at the Heritage Foundation. So, so Bruce, um, just trying to understand, it, it appears, and, you know, it, it appears, the president seems to be saying he wouldn't allow the CIA to use Kim's family as an intelligence asset because that's what the new report was, right? We, we knew this guy has been, was killed a long time ago. The new report was that he was an intelligence asset of the CIA. This is pretty stunning, isn't it? It's shocking and concerning. Uh, when I was at CIA, we referred to North Korea as the hardest of the hard targets. Each of the intelligence sources had a lot of constraints against getting information. So we should be trying to get information on this, uh, as you point out, as a dangerous, uh, threatening regime, not only to the United States, but to our allies. We should be trying to get as much information as we can to understand their intentions as well as their military capabilities, not putting any kind of constraints on the intelligence community. General Hartling, can you wrap your mind around this? I can't. Uh, you know, we gather intelligence. Great folks like Bruce and others that I know at CIA have helped us, the military, in both combat operations. And I used to talk to CIA operatives and analysts all over Europe when I commanded there. And they are critically important for not only determining what an enemy or a foe's intentions are, but also their capabilities. And if you don't have those two things, you're out of luck uh, in terms of dealing with foreign nations. And that's both enemies and friends. So the, the criticality of, of agents, of folks on the ground who are collecting human intelligence, a key area of intelligence collection, are critically important to what we do as a nation and our security as a people. I mean, Bruce, I'm just trying to understand why, why he would do this. Why he would say, I would not use what the CIA thinks the best asset they have against a murderous dictator who uh, has threatened to annihilate the United States and is killing people. Why would he do this? Why would he take Kim's side? I wouldn't use the best guy against you. That would never happen under me. What's the logic? Well, the, the, the president has prioritized his, what he says is a very strong relationship with Kim over a number of things, uh, including it, uh, fully enforcing U.S. law against those who are not <coughs> only violating U.N. resolutions, but U.S. laws. A year ago, uh, Trump said there were 300 North Korean entities. These would be entities violating U.S. law for which the U.S. government has information that he's not sanctioning because he's, we're talking so nicely. Uh, back in March, uh, Trump reversed actions by the Treasury Department to enforce U.N. resolutions. Uh, and also, the U.S. Uh, right now is, is not doing all of the military exercises with South Korea. We've canceled at least right. 11 exercises since last year. Uh, that's risking allied deterrence and defense capabilities. Uh, and also on diplomatic isolation, the president has embraced someone who's on the U.S. sanctions list for human rights violations, describing mm -hmm. him as someone who loves his people and, uh, and is honorable and courageous. So, in a way, the president's undermined all three components of his maximum so, pressure strategy. So, General, I'm also confused. You know, on the same day, Trump says um, they, they, that Kim has kept his word, and that's what really matters is he's kept his word, and he, you know, goes into detail. Well, he's only testing short-range missiles. That, of course, is a violation of the deal, okay, as, as Trump's own national security advisor said uh, to, to the Wall Street Journal con uh, conference, say very clear, no, they've continued. They're violating it. Why is the president doing that, saying Kim is going with his word when he's not? For some odd reason, Aaron, he believes that personal relations are the key to victory. And anyone that has an inkling of knowledge about international relations or political affairs knows that it is not personal relations that is important. It's the strategy of, and the national security of the country you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So he has refused to believe that, and it's just fascinating to me. The thing, if I can add to what Bruce just said, though, I think yes. is critically important. It, it, across the board, not only were we gobsmacked at these comments uh, in this briefing this afternoon, but I can guarantee you that every intelligence officer, every intelligence agency around the world in other countries, especially our friendly friendly ones were just 
amazed at the President of the United States saying something like this, because they know it's not true. The purpose for existence of the CIA is to conduct these kind of operations and gain us intelligence. If they're not doing that, why have a CIA? It's, it's just ludicrous. Well, it, Bruce, it I mean, just is amazing. You know, in the same thing, in the same, you know, conversation or, you know, interaction with reporters where he says he, he wouldn't, you know, use a, a good asset in, in Korea if it offended Kim. He talked about uh, something else that might show a lot, a window here, which is his not a letter. He got another letter from Kim, a beautiful letter. Uh, here he is today and a few other times when he's gotten letters. A letter was given to me by Kim Jong-un, and that letter was a very nice letter. Oh, would you like to see what was in that letter? Yeah. And then we fell in love, okay? No, really. He wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters. We fell in love. He wrote me two of the most beautiful letters. It's a beautiful piece of art. And I think we're going to make a deal. What do you make of that, Bruce? Every time Kim sends a letter, Trump seems to, you know, be in his thrall. Well, we've had these beautiful letters in the past, and none of them have led to any progress, let alone breakthroughs on denuclearization negotiations. So perhaps it shows that Kim's ready to come back to negotiations in a meaningful way. Uh, but so far, all of these beautiful letters have not uh, gotten any kind of progress. Kim Jong-un has been no more willing to abandon his nuclear arsenal than his father and his grandfather. All right. Thank you both very much.